Welcome back my fellow dabbers. We are here again with the Puffco Peak Pro. Today we're going to talk a little bit about cleaning and my process of how to clean the Puffco Peak Pro and how often I do this cleaning. For starters, after every use, after every single use, yes, every single use, I will open up the chamber and just swab it out with a Q-tip and get any of the residual reclaim that's in there out with a Q-tip just dry. About every five or so dabs, I will use something like a turp wipe and I will alcohol swab the inside of the chamber. I will also make sure that in my Q-tip and swabbing, I will get the inside of this and make sure that's really wiped clean as well. Then it's really going to be up to your usage on how often you have to clean the rest of the device, like how I'm going to go through now. <laughs> Depending on how hard you inhale, how much you fill the chamber, how hot and how dirty your concentrate is, are all going to play factors in how often you have to do this. One of the big things that you should be doing is taking the chamber out and off and cleaning underneath the chamber. Now, one of the big things to note when you take your chamber off like that is make sure to do it when the device is warm or hot. I usually will run a cycle and then take the chamber off. You don't need to do a dab or waste any concentrate in order to take the chamber out, but I do recommend running a cycle because what's going to happen is if there's reclaim down in this bottom part and it's all sticky in there and this is cold or it's first thing in the morning or it's in the afternoon on a really cold day and you go to take this out, all of that stickiness is going to bind up and it's going to either tear this silicone in here or pull the pins out of the bottom of the atomizer. When you remove the atomizer, go ahead and pop the jacket off and you can get a small container of alcohol like this or even just a Ziploc bag. And with the jacket off, you're going to just dunk the whole thing inside of the ISO. And you're going to set that to the side and let it sit anywhere from a half hour to an hour depending on how dirty the chamber is. Now the big thing with that is depending on how long you let it soak for, I usually let it dry for five times as long with a minimum of an hour of dry time. You really want to make sure that this is dry and there's no moisture inside because that can be really damaging to your atomizer and your device. <gasps> Once I think it's dry, I'll reattach it onto the base, throw the jacket back on, and I'll run a cycle with no concentrate inside, really to let everything heat up, dry out, and clean out itself. So now that we've covered how to clean the chamber, when the chamber is out and soaking, I'll take a Q-tip with some ISO or a turp wipe, whatever you have on hand, and I'll go to town in this little area. And I'll ISO out everything in here, and I'll really make sure to get down deep in there, depending on how much buildup or reclaim you get and how hard you've been hitting it. The big thing you want to pay attention to is you want to clean off the top of this contact really good, and then after I ISO it and clean it all out, what I do is I take a dry Q-tip and I just make sure to kind of buff this off to make sure there's really good contact between this and your atomizer. The last big thing I pay attention to in this area is I make sure to really get inside of these holes here. It makes it a little easier if while you're doing this deep clean, go ahead, just pop off the glass. If you have one of the Puffco glass stands, you can throw it on there. When you have the glass off and this part off, really make sure you clean inside those holes there. I also make sure to swab the inside of this to clean out this whole area. If you keep good care and do this often and really pay attention to how messy it is getting in here, you can have a white one that lasts 2,000 dabs and looks like this with no deep cleaning. I have never taken off the shell and gone in here and done deep cleaning. I think that's something that I'm actually going to investigate doing now that I have the V2 and I'm not worried about being down a Puffco. You can remove this top plastic casing and get underneath the silicone and do a deep cleaning in there. Who knows, maybe we'll do a video on that coming up. But for now, this is just an example that with good spot cleaning and quick cleaning on the regular basis, you can go 2000 dabs without really destroying your base. So now that we've talked about how to clean this part, I will also take a turp wipe and just wipe the outside of this, uh, you know, just to keep it fresh, clean and white. And um, especially the base from sitting it down on dirty tables and stuff like that. I will uh, just take a alcohol wipe to the whole thing. Last up, the glass. If I'm doing just a quick spot cleaning, when I remove the glass, what I'll do is 
is I will wipe down the bottom of this because you'll feel stickies around the intake part of the glass. So I make sure to really wipe this down, wipe out here. Sometimes I'll even take a Q-tip and try and just alcohol soak a little bit like that and get that real wiped down in there. If you're doing a deep cleaning of the glass, you can do the uh, home remedy way of some isopropyl alcohol and salt and just plug the holes and give it a good shake. If you're trying to take it above and beyond or you have a heady glass like this or like this and isopropyl alcohol and salt is not really what you want to do. I suggest something called heady eddies. It's a great formula that's a powder. You dump a little bit of the powder inside, some boiling water, no shaking, rinse it out and it comes out sparkling. Keep your eyes posted because we are going to be doing a video on Hetty Eddies. My biggest hurdle with my Hetty Eddies video right now is that uh, I don't like letting my pieces get dirty. So I clean them too much to really make a good cleaning video on Hetty Eddies, but I digress. If you are looking to clean Hetty glass, Hetty Eddies is definitely the option I would go for. And once you get your glass clean, your base clean, reassemble all that five hours later your atomizer you get that all on there and dry reassemble your device and now it's time to take a dab we're gonna go ahead and get my favorite setup going usually i rock dry tops but today we're feeling that water life now that we've gotten some wonderful live rosin loaded up the beautiful opal look all fresh and clean we're gonna go ahead and give it a rip And since we're talking about cleaning, one of the big things you can do to really help your heady glass stay fresh is use distilled water. Using tap water or other water that has hard water inside is why you get all those calcification or white hard water spots on your glass. So using distilled water not only as what water you put it in when you use it, but also the water that you use to clean it can make a huge difference in the longevity and life of your heady glass. <coughs> <coughs> I'll tell you, there's nothing like a clean Puffco. That's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for some possible deep cleaning action where we deconstruct the whole Peak Pro. Until then, thanks for watching and stay lifted. <laughs>we are here to choose the winners for the Giving Tree giveaway! I didn't mention this when I originally said I was doing a giveaway, but we're not giving away one FMJ. We're not giving away two FMJs. We are in fact giving away three FMJs. So let's get locked and loaded and pick some winners for these FMJs. It looks like Lamb Chop, you won! And your favorite candy was Warheads. Solid choice. Even though they're way too sour for me, I do agree that those are great candy. And our second winner is Tom B. Fisherman's friend after a bowl of snow cap. It's great for 20. Oh man, Fisherman's friend? I don't think that's a candy I've had before. I'll have to check that one out. Thanks for the great recommendation. Last up, Iron Lungs, Saltwater Taffy from Monterey. Wow. In order to get this reference, you have to be one thing, and that's a Californian, because Monterey is a very specific place in California near the ocean. It's a very small, beautiful town. If you're ever visiting, it's definitely a spot to go to. But Monterey does have amazing saltwater taffy, and it's certainly something to try in a lifetime. Iron Lungs, great choice, and hope you enjoy your FMJ. Well, that's it for the FMJ giveaway. Thanks for supporting the channel, and see you guys in a video soon. For those of you that won, make sure to keep an eye out on the original comment, because we're going to drop a reply there. You have seven days to reply, and we'll get this giveaway out to you ASAP. And as always, stay lifted.